This is my cat, Sven. He prefers to have his water source moving, so I got him a water fountain. He's happy with it, but due to my current living situation, I need to keep it in my room, and I find the constant sound of the water moving very annoying. To solve this problem, I came up with a simple inline motion sensor switch. The fountain uses a 5 volt USB power supply, so I cut a USB extender in half and put a motion sensor switch between the two halves. The resulting cable only supplies power to the connected device when the motion sensor is triggered. This project is really simple, but I decided to make a video on it to introduce you to the components I used and maybe inspire you to fix similar problems that you may have. The sensor that I'll be using to detect motion is called a PIR or passive infrared sensor. As you may be able to tell from the name, this sensor detects motion by detecting changing heat sources in its field of view. Living things like cats and humans emit heat, so this type of motion sensor will work great for this application. You probably often interact with PIR sensors in your life. If you live somewhere with motion-activated floodlights, they are likely using a PIR sensor. Often public spaces like bathrooms will use PIR sensors to detect if the room is occupied, so that lights can be turned off accordingly to save energy. The other core component of this project is a MOSFET. MOSFETs are capable of handling higher current loads than their BJT counterparts, but they behave similarly. Applying a voltage to their gate pin will allow current to flow between their drain and source pins. The MOSFET will serve as a switch for the water fountain, converting the output signal from the PIR sensor to current flow to the water fountain. The first circuit I built was a test circuit that uses a breadboard power supply and LED to test the PIR sensor. Breadboard power supplies are great modules to use for prototyping. The one I have here takes in an input voltage of 7 to 12 volts through a barrel jack, and it outputs 5 volts straight to the breadboard's power rails. I plug the power supply into the breadboard along with the PIR sensor module, MOSFET, LED, and 330 ohm resistor, and make connections according to this diagram. You can find more details about the parts I used in the written guide which is linked in the description of this video. The PIR sensor module that I'm using has two potentiometers for tuning the sensor. One of them adjusts the sensitivity of the sensor, and the other adjusts the duration of the high output signal. I used a screwdriver to adjust the potentiometers so the sensor was sensitive enough to detect the motion of my hand, and the duration lasted a couple of seconds. The important takeaway from this circuit is that the LED isn't being directly powered through the PIR sensor module. It is being powered through the MOSFET, which gets a signal to its gate from the module. This distinction is important because it means we can power high current loads, like water pumps, that would otherwise damage delicate components, like the ones that make up the PIR sensor module. After testing this circuit to make sure the PIR sensor is performing as expected, we can remove the breadboard power supply and replace it with a male USB connector. Then we can add an output USB connection using a female connector that we can use to connect loads that get powered via USB. I found an unused USB extender cable, which has a female USB connector on one end and a male USB connector on the other. I cut this cable in half and stripped the outer casing at the ends of the split cables. Then I stripped the red and black power wires on both split cables. I crimped ferrule terminals onto each of the four power wires, it isn't strictly necessary to use ferrules for this, but I use them a lot at my work and I've grown to really like them for applications such as this. Now I can assemble the new circuit on the breadboard. I removed the breadboard power supply and added two two-pin screw terminals, one for the input cable and one for the output cable. Here's the diagram that I used for assembling this circuit. Understand that I'm not directly wiring it the same way as shown on the diagram, but all of the same nodes are connected. To test this circuit, I plug the male input USB cable into the 5 volt USB power supply that came with the fountain, and the output cable to the USB cable attached to the fountain. Then I positioned the circuit with the sensor above the area so that the sensor was triggered whenever my cat approached. I also tuned the sensors a little more so that the sensitivity was adequate and the output signal lasted for a couple more seconds, long enough for Sven to register that the water is moving and feel comfortable drinking from it. I soldered this same working circuit onto some protoboard, and I screwed in my male USB input cable and female USB output cable. 
I also plugged the PIR sensor into some male headers that I installed on the top of the protoboard. I also designed and 3D printed some wall mounts that the protoboarded circuit and PIR sensor module can be mounted to the wall with. I attached these to the protoboard and sensor module using some self-tapping plastic screws. I installed the board and sensor module on the wall near my cat's food and water station using a screw and wall adhesive. Then I plugged in the power supply and fountain and tested the circuit again by waving my hand to verify it was still working as expected. And Sven approves. This was a very successful project and a simple solution to a problem I had. I hope you were able to learn something from this. Thanks for watching. This concludes this guide. If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech. If you want to support the creation of more guides and kits, you can follow us on Twitter or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Or you can buy a kit from our Etsy store. Any support is greatly appreciated. Lastly, we want to start building Micronote into a learning community in a couple of ways. First, if you have any questions or discussion ideas, you can post them in the community discord. Second, we want to start adding community content to our website. If you've worked on a project that you think others can learn from, fill out the community submission Google form to be considered for a community post. Links to our social media, Discord server, Etsy store, and community submission form can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.